Namaste. So the last couple of days have been really interesting. A couple of people commented on my last videos argumentatively. Why does somebody like you, mature Swami and all of this, why do you need a tantric partner? What do you suppose you're going to get out of it? And so on. And then this other guy wrote in um, criticizing my views on the Buddha and the Buddha's teaching. And of course, they're coming from this platform of we have the only right view and everybody else is wrong. Whereas our view is the Sri Vidya is so broad that it's inclusive. It has room for everything and everybody and their different views. Huh? So, okay, if you want to be a strict Varnashram Dharma uh, advocate and claim that a sannyasi can never do any tantric sex uh, type of sadhana, you know, that's fine. You follow that. And if you want to claim that actually Buddha, you know, you want to pick and choose quotes out of context from the suttas to prove that the Buddha's realization was something completely new that was never attained before. Well, if you want to believe that, <laughs> go right ahead. That fits too in the umbrella of Sri Vidya. See, if you want to be male or female or trans or bi or whatever, you know, that fits too. And if you want to be celibate or you want to be kinky or whatever you are, that also fits. And we, we, we see that the Vedic tradition is more broad, more inclusive, more, contains more variety and more different approaches to the absolute than others. So in contrast, these other teachings look very narrow, sectarian, biased, and limited. But that's okay. They still fit in the, the great teaching of the Cosmic Mother. They have their place. They are for a specific kind of person. Now, the problem is those kind of people cannot see the bigger view. So they think, I'm right and everybody else is wrong, even though I'm only going on hearsay evidence and not my personal experience uh, or realization. So if you go all the way back to the beginning of this channel and you look at our early videos, you will find that we took a stand. Way back in 2012, we took a stand that from now on, we're not going on hearsay. We're not going on faith. We're going only on personal experience. And if we can't experience it personally, we'll regard it as a theory and consider it. But it's not something we're going to stand up for and defend or promote unless it's confirmed by experience in the here and now. So that's why we criticize Buddhism, the religion, because they have changed in the last thousand years. My mentor, Bhikkhu Nyanananda, told me about a thousand years ago, there was a big debate that should the bulk of our teaching be experiential or academic? And the academics won. 
Well, of course, an academic is going to win a debate. Duh. The Buddha says, come and see. Openayiko. Come and see. It's open. Huh? Come, do the process, experience the result, see for yourself. But the academics say, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do the practice. We're only going to use the scriptures, the suttas, to try to prove our points. And so they have degenerated from a realized practice to a sectarian religion. And the same with the people who try to prove stuff from the Vedic Shastras. They don't have any actual experience. They're just quoting things, usually out of context. Huh? And uh, things that they haven't experienced, that are just hearsay. And they're using that to attack someone who has experienced all these things. All these things. huh? much wider variety of experience because I never closed myself in. I, I never closed other views off. I never denied the possibilities. So I just deleted their comments. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time engaging with somebody who can't be convinced because they're not willing to look at any alternate views. They're not willing to accept that somebody could have a broader view, a wider compass or horizon than they do, and that their views look very narrow and forced in that kind of context. If they had bothered to look at our channel and see the breadth of our teaching, Maybe they'd be a little more respectful before they start arguing and criticizing. Huh? My Adi Gurus, 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 Guru said, the most dangerous thing in society is a stupid critic. One who has not learned thoroughly his opponent's point of view. So, of course, that applies to all sectarian religionists, religionists, <laughs> whether they're Christian, Hindu, you know, Muslim, or Buddhist. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of Buddhist today. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. But you should see these people in their native habitats. <laughs> They simply believe in the scriptures, just like a fundamentalist of any religion. And of course, they continually miss the point, which is the experience of self-realization or Nibbana or Brahman or whatever you want to call it. So, that said, I guess 8.43, well, we probably got rid of most of the stupid people right now so we can get to the real point. <laughs> the point is, I got a message last night confirming what I had been feeling the last couple of days. You know, if you watch our videos over the last couple of months, you see me getting happier and happier, right? <laughs> so this is coming from inside. I haven't changed anything externally about the way I live. But internally, something is waking up in me that is extremely wonderful and nice. So, of course, I want to share that with everybody, but it's something you have to approach on your own by doing the sadhana. So I want to encourage everybody to chant the mantras of the Sri Vidya because they're so powerful and the effects are so wonderful. So I got to thinking, this state that I'm experiencing is so wonderful and so beautiful. 
and so kind and soft. I couldn't have imagined it, you know, five years ago, or what to speak of 10 or 15 years ago, or even 30 years ago, 36 years ago, when I experienced my first enlightenment experience. It's like inconceivable from any of those platforms. Or even a year ago. So if this state that I have now is inconceivable to who I was a year ago or more, then maybe if I continue this sadhana, there are more states that are even more inconceivable and amazing, unimaginable to me that I can't anticipate or I can't guess because I don't have the relevant experience yet. <laughs> Just like if I had looked at myself the way I am now a year ago, I would have said, whoa, that's like out of the ballpark, man. That's like, you know, inconceivable. So based on that experience, that observation. Is it not possible that there is another state in the future that's even more inconceivable? More, more unimaginable? More amazing? Certainly it's possible. Certainly. So I'm putting all my plans on hold, including the Tantra partner and everything. I'm, I'm just Anything that I had planned to do over the next month or two is being delayed, pushed back, put on the back burner, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm going to concentrate more on my sadhana because in my experience, huh, never mind any future plans that I could imagine would give me happiness, it's very likely that the results that I get from my sadhana, the reciprocation that I get from Ma, is going to be even better than that. Plus, I want to kind of retreat, even though I've been kind of on retreat the last couple of months. I want to retreat even more and minimize all the uh, distractions and interruptions to my sadhana, which at this point is mostly mental recitation of the Mahasodashi mantra and the uh, just remembering the the beauty and the kindness of the Universal Mother Shakti, who appears in my dreams nearly every night. I mean, this is amazing in all in itself. That she would take the trouble to appear in some devotee's dreams. I mean, if she's doing it with me, she must be doing it with others, right? I mean, how, how wonderful and kind that is, that she would appear. And some of the dreams are like really funny. Like I was playing, practicing my flute <laughs> in one dream. I was going to play some classical piece, Western classical piece. And suddenly she appeared in my, in the door, knocked on my door and appeared in the doorway and said, I can play the keyboard part. Uh -huh. She even used the correct historical term. I can play the cembalo part. Cembalo is a kind of uh, instrument similar to a harpsichord that has a keyboard and like that. She said, I can play the cembalo part. And I said, again, in the technical terminology, from just a figured bass, because that's the notation that they used in those days called a figured bass. And she said, yeah, no problem. You know, the only thing was I was stark naked <laughs> in the dream. And I was like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and she was like completely 
not disturbed, you know. She's just so friendly. And she's like everybody's mom, you know. <laughs> it's hard to explain. But anyway, she gave indications in a dream last night that, yes, your intuition is correct. And there are more wonderful things than you can imagine coming in just the near future. So continue your sadhana and you will experience things beyond your wildest dreams. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.